conditions are just absolutely ideal. Like you couldn't have, I couldn't have asked for a more perfect race to do that. Like it was just amazing, the everything about it. So I was, I was really nervous. Um, you know, I knew, I knew my fitness was there and things were good, but I, I've had a few niggles and I wasn't. You know, I've had a few workouts where they've kind of flared up and I haven't really been able to do that well in the workouts. And so I was like, if, you know, something flares up in the race, it could go sideways really quickly. And it's one thing to get, have workouts that are really good that say, oh, you should be running 32 flat or, or whatever. And, but it's a totally another thing to put it all together on race day. So, um, I was nervous. I was excited, um. And I did. I was confident that I was ready to run fast. And when I did my warm up, I felt really good, and that surprised me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was. I said to Richard, "I'm like Richard, like knock on wood, but I feel really good." And he's like, "Okay, that's you know, like that's great." <laughs> Through 5K and 15:50 was, which was pretty much exactly where I wanted to be. A little on the faster end, I had wanted between 15:50 and 16 flat. So um, Betsy Sena was pacing us to go through around there, and so she was great and. Uh, I think around there she dropped off and then I just sort of stayed where I was and kept running and running and um, you know it was really crowded and girls were constantly like would cut in too soon and I was having to pull my arm up so many times like ladies smile spot here like <laughs> <laughs> but it was good and then I think it was um, eight or nine laps to go um, I got really boxed in and a whole bunch of girls went around me and I ended up going away to the back in the like 13th or 14th and um, I lost like three seconds on that lap and, and then battled back up to run with Lanny and Lanny and I ran together for the rest of the entire race until 600 meters to go and um, I don't really it's all kind of a blur like I knew that we were running well I knew we were on pace to run 32 I had no idea that I was on pace to run the Canadian record and when I saw the the 8K, which was 25.30, um, I knew, like, th it was good. Like, that was, because we, Richard and I had talked, and he said, you know, if you go through between 25.30 and 25.50, like, things are looking good for Olympic extent. And so I was like, okay, this is, you know, I've got room to die still, and probably still run <laughs> Um And, uh, <laughs> but as the race went on, I still, you know, I still seemed to, feel good and still had stuff left and um, I don't really remember when the pack sort of broke away like watching the race back I wish that I had gone sooner with like 800 to go but I didn't and um, with one lap to go when I when I knew that there was a chance I think I think I looked at the clock and thought I needed to run like seven low 70 something to run the king record and I was like okay like I can do that I can do that and I ended up running I don't know what it was I think Luke said 68 or 69, but yeah, if you watch the last 200, I just was like sprinting, like all those years training with Britt Townsend and chasing around, you know, Jess Smith and Helen Cross, those 800 girls, like, I guess my legs still remember how to run fast-ish at the end of a 10K, so thanks Britt for all that. <laughs> but yeah, it was, uh, I don't know where it came from, but you know, yeah, besides that, I wasn't really... Thing. The only other time I looked at the clock was a 5K split and um, 8K split. I finished and I was like, I didn't know if I had run the Canadian record or not because I didn't see my time. And I was just, I knew I had run under way under 32, so I was super happy. And then Lanny was like, You got it. And I was like, What? She's like, You got the record. And I was like, I did. And then I looked up and saw the board and I was like, um, I probably swore. It's shocking. And uh, I ran right over to Richard, who was at, like, just on the other side of the track, and it was a really special moment, and it was pretty overwhelming, and called my mom right away, and she was practically at a heart attack, she was, like, bawling, and it was really surreal, because I didn't think that, that the Canadian record would be something I was going to run that night at all, I just really wanted to run under 32 minutes, and so it was like a cherry on the cake Sunday <laughs> yeah it was I mean it's just uh, watching Jess O'Connell run um, 1506 literally right before I got on the track was really inspiring and really exciting to watch that so I was pretty pumped going onto the track 
There were some great uh, performances. Jess O'Connell's one of them. Justin Knight with a massive personal best by almost half a minute, taking the Canadian Junior record. Uh, there were lots of great performances. Obviously, yours was the highlight. And Lanny did really well, too. She was only a couple seconds off of the old Canadian record. Are you going to stick with the 10,000 for, for Worlds and for Rio, or do you have other ideas? Especially Rio, because it's another year away. Um, like, World Championships in Rio will definitely be concentrating on the 10,000 meters. I will not be running a marathon. Or do you have some more races coming up uh, in the next uh, couple months? Yeah, I've got lots going on. I mean, this does change things a little bit. Uh, Richard and I are going to sit down this afternoon, actually, and go over, um, you know, what we want to do. And, and you know, there's a lot to be talked about. So I, I can't really discuss it because I don't really know everything yet. So we'll see. It's exciting. There's lots of fun stuff to do. I'm still going to do some road racing, um, definitely doing Ottawa 10K Chaps and Calgary Half Marathon Champs at the end of May. So still doing those. Um, Pan Am Games for sure. Uh, I mean, tentatively I've you know made the team in the 10,000 meter unless <laughs> two girls run faster than I did last <laughs> weekend. So hey, you never know. And um, you know, I might try to run a 5,000 meter on the track and go for, go for that. So we'll see. But definitely 10,000 meters at World Championships in Beijing will be kind of the, the goal race of the summer. So, you know, it's still a little bit surreal for sure. <laughs> I bet Wasn't it is. Expected. I bet it is. Well, it's a long time coming because you had, uh, what was it, a year and a half of uh, what seemed to be plantar fasciitis? I was, I took, well, the six weeks off in March and April, May, started trying to run again. It still hurt. I had the prolotherapy done in September. Um, and so, in October, I was able to start running about 75K a week, give or take. Um, and then it was still hurting, and it was just, oh, it's the worst. Five five is the worst. <laughs> but um, eventually, after National Cross, it started to get better, and I could get through runs with the pain being a lot more manageable. And then after the half marathon in Arizona in January, um, it seemed to sort of take a turn and I was able to get through weeks where it was almost not there at all and now I'm at the point where um, when I run and when I race I don't think about it at all so I'm I don't know how it happened but I'm so thankful I thought it would never go away <laughs> um, it does so if you ever have had plantar fasciitis or you have it it will go away just be patient you're, you're excited, obviously, because you're going to be in the Pan Am Games, you're going to be in the IAAF World Track and Field Championships in Beijing, and you're going to uh, go to the Olympics, it looks like. So that's exciting. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, it's, there's a lot. <laughs> there is a lot, I'm very too. excited. got to stay healthy. Two Canadian records. That's awesome. Good for you. Thank you very much for the interview. No problem. Thanks for having me. See you later.